Hi, welcome to Jadekind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I have the third and final video for the Bones 4 Kickstarter unboxing little series I've been doing uh, this week. Um, first, of course, I had the core set that I unboxed, and then uh, I unboxed the, a few of the expansions that I picked up, and both of those are very long videos. And so rather than extend either of them, uh, I had a handful of add-ons, which is not nearly the number of miniatures, but many of them are much bigger miniatures um, that I picked up from the Kickstarter as well, and I figured I'd still uh, show each of those off. Uh, before I actually get down to it, I'm actually just going to let you know what ones you have, so if you're looking for a specific mini, you'll just be able to know. Uh, I got both of the living statues, the Spartan and Amazon. Um... I got the, I think it's Trolls set, a little set of Trolls. Uh, I got the Thunderfoot Behemoth, a dinosaur there. I get the uh, Black Tooth Terror, another dinosaur. Um, I picked up the We Will Rock You, the, the rock uh, bird. <laughs> Giant bird miniature. Uh, the dragon turtle. And the one that I haven't even been able to see through the clear past it back to get even an idea of. It's a came in a box. Argent Silver Dragon. Which is a big one. <laughs> so yeah. I got a number of the add-ons here. And we will... Uh, Kind of be picking them apart, going through. Many of them, of course, are in many pieces, but uh, we'll take a look at what each one has to offer. And of course, I'll try and hold them together to give you an idea of what they look like. But with them being in many pieces, I'm sure, many of them will kind of be falling apart. Anyways, let's take a look. And so we got, uh, this is the non-broken sort of Spartan miniature. It has a little base, the pedestal there. And um, he'll actually stand in this little rocky pile here. Yeah, this Spear arm. A lot of detail on the shield. It's apparently like a Medusa looking shield there. Spartan helmet. And so we got him. And then the same one, only the cracked and broken version. Now I'm pretty sure the base and the little rock that he stands on are the same. As far as I can tell, they look same, or at least, I mean, if not identical, they're at least kind of the same general. Actually, I'm yeah, pretty sure they're just identical. But yeah, so he is broken. So one thing I thought with this is I could paint one of them, the, the smooth one, to look like maybe a metal bronze statue, whereas the broken ones could be like crumbling sort of rock appearance. Uh, this stuff will have to be rebent, but of course, it's bones, you can do that. And then we get the, um, <coughs> then we get the, uh, Amazon, the female, which has a different looking base. Um, this one's a bit of a different kind of plinth there. She's got her own little rubble pile that she'll, uh, stand in. It also fits her shield, and her shield has a uh, minotaur on it. Then uh, again, she has, you know, we have the smooth variation here. She's in pieces. And also the, uh, the broken and cracked version. Again, these parts are still the same, but uh, not having this one again. This one has a a spear that is very bent. 
but uh, same miniature, just bent and or cracked and broken and falling apart. From the trolls set, we have this little um, like vampire trollish pug, uh, which you could just make a giant pug if you cut off the teeth. So I mean, you could you can do that if you'd rather just have a giant pug mini. Uh, well, he is just so cute, and uh, so yeah, definitely was like I'm gonna pick this set up because of him. Plus, you know, the other things are actually useful in game, but. A little hug. I got this troll guy here. Kind of standardish. Kind of attacking. Rawr. Of course, any of these, like this might be like swamp troll or something, but depending on how you paint them, what colors you give them, you can make them a variety of different things. But this one firmly feels like a swamp troll. Um, so we have this guy, and then it's a few little bitty pieces that come separate. Uh, I mean, both of his arms and the base are separate, but there is a little fin that attaches to his back, and then both of his ears are, uh, well, they're these little bitty pieces there. Which is because they're curved and at an angle so like they would overlap and you couldn't get it out of the mold if you had them attached. Um, it's almost silly how small they are. Um, but he's got this sort of rocky base. Then he's got all these bumps and etc. And he's carrying a big old fish, like a big fish there. And he's got uh, fins and can't see. His face there, got a scowl, and he kind of, you know, definitely has that aquatic sort of fish-like look himself as well, so he'd be the uh, definite uh, swamp troll, I suppose. And then we get this, uh, I guess I'd say like a rock troll, and I don't know why some of these, you know, come like, this guy's like all glued together, he's assembled, I don't know why some come like that and some don't, but... Um, but, you know, he's got basically all this, like, rocky, hard protrusions on his back, like, crystalline structures. And, and that's just going to be fun to paint. That's one of the things I saw. Is like, that's that's going to be cool to try and come up with a cool paint scheme for him. He's got, you know, soft underbelly and on his back and everything, sort of exposed rock there. Um, but, again, just another troll there. And then we get this uh, Atten. And, uh, so the main body first, you know, he's got bumps and like, sort of a loincloth looking thing there and a couple of heads with, I, I love, the heads are so different, like, they're different shapes, different hairstyles, this one's got the nice long hair, this one's got this weird, you know, top bit there, um, he's got a, yeah, longer hair there, so, there's that, and then you see he's holding this boulder and his hands are separate and the boulder is separate so each hand goes onto the boulder and can hold that now that is one way he is configured the other is with a pig if you want him to be holding up a pig instead of a boulder they give you a pig uh, now admittedly I put this hand in here and this is the fourth hand it comes with and I cannot get it to quite match up in there I don't know if they sent me like double of one hand or something and I'm missing one or what. I don't really care. I wanted him with the boulder anyways. Um, but that is just something I noticed. I was like, hmm, I think that should slot in. I mean, worst case, if I wanted to, I could cut this off and just glue this hand there. And I mean, it matches the handprint enough. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's just like a, a bones warping issue and it's supposed to fit in there, but it doesn't because of that. Not really sure. But, He's supposed to be able to hold a pig as well as a second option. <laughs> then we're on to Dinosaur. The uh, Thunderfoot Behemoth. 
Um, definitely one of the the must haves. If you watch the um, expansion set, I was so excited for the uh, Lost Valley to get the dinosaurs in there, and so I was not going to pass up on some more even bigger dinosaurs. Uh, definitely grew up with Jurassic Park. Loved that as a kid. Um, I do not use dinosaurs in my games all that often. But definitely a thought would be to try and create a world where, you know, because I do a lot of my own world building. I can design a world that has them. I just usually do, you know, if I do just the generic, generic fantasy, I don't f see them fitting within that world. But it's plenty easy to come up with a world that has a bunch of dinosaurs in it. I just have to make the decision to do it. <laughs> uh, his head is separate. Um, but, you know, I think about it, maybe the reason that some of them are glued together is they glue together the ones that are easy to paint, even once they're assembled. But, for example, when this is together, you'd have some trouble getting into the, some of that area, so this way you can paint it and then glue it. Maybe that's the idea behind why they don't glue all of them, but do glue some of them. But, yeah, so, Thunderfoot Behemoth. And the Black Tooth Terror. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Again, having grown up on Jurassic Park, this was an important one to have. Um, first off, just base, big, rocky kind of base to put them on. Um, and his back here is separate and was actually came on a sprue with his tongue. Uh, I left a little bit on so I can clean it up properly when I actually assemble it. His head is separate too, of course. <laughs> uh, so there's the thing with his tongue. So his tongue will be, you can kind of see there's the spot for it there. Um, but yeah, he's got, you know, all the gnarly details and etc. He's got lots of texture and spines and a head that just will not stay on. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, with the foot here, like the two little points that stick into the base here, so you actually see the bottom of this foot. And again, kind of detail for that. Uh, and uh, at this point, I'm going to have to zoom out of it. Okay. So we have the dragon turtle here. Um, I partially got it because I was kind of upset that I'd, I'd chosen to, that I, well, I'd skipped the kraken, although I've actually picked up the kraken since then uh, at a good deal at uh, the uh, used gaming action at one of my, at my uh, friendly local gaming stores. Um, so now I have a couple of underwater big baddies to use, um, but I just, you know, if ever, you know, you go underwater, you want to have something cool to fight, right? Um, each of the fins, top shell, it, it, it head, and tail are all separate, so he's a bunch of pieces. Uh, this fin actually, uh, will not just stay on just sitting there, I have to glue that one, so the rest of mine, you can kind of sell what he looks like, sort of. But he's got lots of texture on the fins, he's got big claws on those, um, and his mouth is open. Big spiny shell with some, like, barnacles on it, spiny tail. Undershell just has the little hole for the base. I'll get to in a second. But yeah, just like a really big turtle that's you know got a bit of draconic in him. <laughs> and the base has various parts that you know connect together. Basically, you know, it's rock with shells and then vases and coins and couple uh, you know, treasure chests and just all this stuff that uh, is going to basically make up the idea of this is a mound of treasure that he's swimming on top of, um, but again, connected with a bunch of sprues, so uh, we'll take some cleaning up to get that all together. But then it's all centered on this piece here that is hollow and a little flexible. So this is really lightweight. Uh, and then it has this clear piece that goes in here. And then, what was the angle for that? There's like a keyed 
entry here. So he's actually at an angle when he you put him on here. Um, now I'm pretty much going to make it where he is not a permanently affixed to it. I'm going to leave that to insert and remove so he can come off of it uh, when I assemble it. So you don't, obviously you don't have to have him like permanently attached. But, uh, but yeah, he has a cool base to be a part of there. And the rock is massive. Oh my god. <laughs> That's, that, that is huge. Okay, um, like enough, like, and he's in enough huge pieces, I cannot show them all off. Um, but I will kind of show here. He, too, sits on the base at a bit of an angle. <laughs> Just trying to kind of give you an idea. So he's going to be at a base on a bit of an angle. But then, let's take him to a few points and look at him a bit separately here. Okay, let's start with the base. Um, on the end, another kind of hello flexible bit that has things added on top of it. Two little rocks here, slot together and go on the base that leave a little pin and just a spot for part of him to rest. And then there's a separate piece that's also a little, like, skull. So you got just a rocky base for him to sit on. That's simple. And then we get the rock him himself. Um, with, uh, talons. Basically, a giant bird of prey is what we got here. And I don't know how I'm going to paint him. That's the kind of thing, like... Because, I mean, you can make him just, like, a big eagle, like, a rock. But I'm like, probably not. Like, do I want to paint him, like, red and make him, like, a giant... Because it's really... They call it a rock. I call it giant bird of prey. I can make him, like, a bluish color. Make him, like, a thunderbird. I can make him, like, reddish and make him, like, a giant phoenix. Like, I have some options here. Um, <laughs> and he could be very useful for many of them. I'm like... Like, if he were cheaper, I'd have gotten more than one of them. Um, anyway, so the main body here, uh, you know, he's got his big old feathers going back and tail feathers there, talons, beak open, fierce looking eyes. Yeah, so you got the main body. Uh, I will note there are little letters. Um, for left and right wings, so it's easy to tell apart, although they're keyed like everything else, so you can figure it out, but, and these are heavy, it's like a massive wingspan here. Now, again, like the turtle, there's just a little peg in the bottom that you can kind of just ignore, and you can leave him separate from his base, so you can take him off if wanted, so you don't have to leave him permanently attached to his base, um, so just think leaving him separate is going to make it easier for storing, but yeah. Big wings, lots of detail, lots of feathers. I mean, look at the size of what that feather is going to be compared to, let's, you know, <laughs> even take just a troll, so something already very big. <laughs> so, giant bird. And now, finally, we move on to Argent, the silver dragon. And, of course, they come unpainted. So he's whatever color dragon I want him to be, but I think they called him a silver dragon. And I don't know. I don't know if I want to do silver. I don't know if I... Oh, first thing I noticed, he, he is a darker color. Oh, my God. He's actually less pieces than I thought. He's going to be easier to assemble, assemble than some of the others. So big! Oh my god, he's so big! I'll leave the wings off for right now. Let's just get the uh, the main body. Anyway, so let's look, take a look at our new dragon. So let's take a look at the dragon here. Uh, first, just sort of the main body. And he's got big sort of rocky 
base here that his feet and tail slot into. He's got uh, scales and different midsection. He's got sort of a regal pose, and I guess that's sort of why they say silver, is that kind of feels a little more of a metallic regalness. But, I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be. You know, it could definitely be like a red dragon might have that regalness to him as well. He's got a little bit of a beard here. Um, I just see all the scales and the tail's got a almost fin-like end to it. Uh, so in here the feet it's got it's like four toes on each one. Let's see that there. And then before I try and hold them together, let's take a look at these wings here. Uh, cool, pretty much the same. Big, smooth, kind of almost giving him like a leathery kind of texture. Like as big as him. Uh, you got big uh, claw, sort of bone protrusions out of the end. Which of course don't work very well for flying, but you know, they look awesome. Otherwise, bat sort of wings with, again, claws at the end of each of these fingers. Um, you can kind of see each of the ridges with the bone going through it. You get some of that scale appearance from the dragon's body going onto the wing here. Um, little bumps now near the end of these. I will know, and both of them have it. I see here, basically, there's a spot where, however this is formed in the mold, there is a sprue bit that is attached right here in the dead center. And so... Most likely, I will need to end up getting maybe like some green stuff or some sort of some sort of putty like that, folding over and just sort of working around there to actually basically remold that one little bitty spot. It's tiny. Um, you could probably get away with just ignoring it. Yeah, you know, if you're not a perfectionist, but if you really want it to look nice, you're going to need to. If you care about the minor details, then that is something to know about, is that the wings both have that right in the center. This one is on top of the ridge for the bone, this one is just in part of the smooth area. Um, but yeah, so that is something to note. Now, I'm going to try give you a look at this guy. Just see what I can do. Okay. So just try and give you an idea. Yeah, you know, first off, like how close some of the wings get to the ground when he's standing on his base. I mean. I mean, presumably we are aware of this, I don't know if I ever mention it, but I do these bones unboxings on this mat here, because, oh, tail's all under there anyways, but uh, on these bikes, you can kind of see based on the squares <laughs> as he stands here, the kind of space he physically takes up on the battlefield. Um, I would almost be tempted, like, if I were playing him and I actually chose to use him instead of just as a, you know, this guy is, uh, just a showpiece for the shelf. If I use him, put him on the battlefield, I would probably almost have it be, you know, the base around here be his spot. And then I think dragons do have a wing attack, so if they're within that space, they can be attacked there. But maybe let players try and attack wings if they're able to reach them, so maybe on one side, like literally just sort of make it where there's different hit areas, and it's not just like an e even, you know, squares here. Because obviously a guy, even a larger guy down here could not, you know, if they're just at the end of the wing, they could not attack that wing. Because it's way up here, because he's giant. So they'd almost have to like, get within his, like, inside of his space 
it's kind of his bubble to reach to attack him physically. Just interesting ideas that you don't think about, you know, the, you know, just theater of mind, or even if you just have a giant kind of, you know, piece of cardboard that just says dragon on it, put on the battlefield. But seeing a 3D mini, you kind of get inspiration for the kind of space he's actually going to take up. <laughs> this thing is massive. I don't know if I will ever actually put him on a battlefield. He might just be the kind of guy, you know, I hope that I do eventually at least get him painted. But he might just end up on one of the shelves looking beautiful. Man, he looks beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that those were the add-ons I got. Of course, there were many I didn't get, many I wanted to get and just couldn't justify uh, <laughs> getting everything, of course. So, um, But yeah, uh, if you, again, picked up any of the other add-ons that were just awesome and that I need to try and look at, you know, maybe in retail, let me know so I can add them to my list because, you know, sometimes you can't get it all during the Kickstarter and you just got to get it later on. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, if you didn't already check out, I did, like I said, have uh, a video of a few of the expansions and the core set uh, for this Bones for Kickstarter. Um, you know, I always appreciate the, uh, the if you click that like button, and if you're not already subscribed, please do so. Thank you for watching. Bye.